from Gia Jackson. We welcome those of you who watched Notre Dame advance to the Sweet 16 with a win over Ole Miss. Eric Fried, Steffi Sorensen, and our crew here in Raleigh, a very loud Reynolds Coliseum. We've played a minute 15. First two field goals of the game belong to NC State. Sarah Puckett just picked up a foul for Tennessee after Rakia Jackson got Tennessee on the board. Wes Moore, the head coach for NC State in his 11th season with the Wolfpack, 35th overall after getting knocked out in the first round last season, trying to get his team back to the Sweet 16 where they were two years ago, actually went to the Elite Eight two seasons ago. And Saniah Rivers has been a player who has led him all season long. And she's on the board. All right, Steffi, electric atmosphere in here. Yeah. So far, an electric start on the court. Give me your keys. How do you think this game is going to unfold as it plays out here today? These, te these two teams are really evenly matched. You think about the athleticism, the skill along the perimeter. They've got bigs inside. I think Tennessee has the favor in terms of depth. Obviously, they're going to establish Tamara Key and her <laughs> playing in the state of North Carolina. Surprisingly, the first round game was her first ever time playing in her home state picked up the dub from right next door in Cary, North Carolina. Madison Hayes off to James defended by Powell. Off balance and NC State red hot in the early going. I think it's going to come down to just players making shots. Everybody's going to key in on Rakia Jackson, but already a great start. OK, here the stars are shining. Rakia Jackson with five as she knocks down the three. Three-point shot is going to be critical for Tennessee today. Can they get them to go when they get one from Jackson on their first attempt? Here's Jackson and Rivers. Great matchup here. Rivers, first miss for NC State. Powell with the rebound, and the point guard will bring it across half court. Kicks it over to Puckett. Good shooter on the way. Westmore called this game, Eric, a butt game. You got to get your butt back in transition. You got to get your butt down and guard and push somebody back and get rebounds. Had to have him explain that a little bit to me when he said a butt game. Yes, two T's. And then we, you follow up. No butts about it, so it all works. Another one off the run. And that's a good look at what the junior from Virginia Beach can do. No one was back to get the pass from Jasmine Powell. So Jewel Spear stepped back to make sure Tennessee didn't turn it over. Well, early in the preseason, these two teams actually had a close scrimmage, so some familiarity with each other, although Jewel Spear did not play in that game. Wow, how about Jackson? Jackson showing the star power right in the opening minutes here. For Tennessee. Not even really a, th a true three-point shooter, but man, flexing that muscle today. 32% on the season. Mid-range game is a big part of her game, but showing the three so far for Kelly Harper, who of course was a head coach here for four years at NC State, now coaching back here at Reynolds Coliseum, leading her team to this spot, trying to make it to a third straight Sweet 16. River Baldwin at the free throw line for the Wolfpack. NC State beat Chattanooga on Saturday, 64-45. NC State outstanding defensively all season long. They held the Mox to single-digit scoring in each of the first three quarters. And Baldwin makes the second. He will check out. Hollingshed will check in. Westmore's team struggles to score sometimes, and that's going to be the concern here today for NC State. Yeah, the key for them all season long has been their defense. They, they will guard you one through five. They're balanced. Five players scoring double figures. That's guarding Rakia Jackson is a handful for anyone. I mean, she is a legitimate pro, and that was concern for Westmore. But I'm curious to see, and I haven't seen it so far, Eric, any hesitancy from the guards for NC State for, for shooting. And they struggled a little bit in the first round game. Westmore really harping on them in practice yesterday. Take the shot. Be confident when you take it. Know that you're going to make it. So really trying to instill some confidence in his players. And hey, right now working. Shooting 80% from the floor. After shooting 33% in round one against Chattanooga. James, good three-point shooter. Jackson out to defend the line. Rivers on the pull-up. NC State is five of six from the floor so far. 
Rivers and James so connected right now offensively. Here's Julian Hollingshed, and a blocking foul is called on Baldwin. Isaiah James draws two. Rakia Jackson just overcloses out against Sanai Rivers. Sanai Rivers, terrific mid range jumper. That's her bread and butter right there. I bet you she loves going up against a lottery pick in this game. Going head to head right now. Rakia Jackson already into double figures. Didn't take very long. I mean, we barely, four and a half minutes? We okay. barely sat down. She went for 26 against Green Bay, and as Steffi mentioned, was outstanding from the floor. Three pointer in and out from James. Foul called on Sanaya Rivers. Rivers working on that shoulder. She missed some time this year, three games, with a back problem. Got some shoulder discomfort right now. That left arm was up pretty high. So the foul on Rivers her first. And again, Rakia Jackson. That's a deep two. 12 points for Jackson. Very a little motion to uh, watching Rakia Jackson throughout the year. Just. She is stone cold today, all business. She's told me she feels like they, they have unfinished business here in this NCAA tournament. They're playing like it. Rivers off the mark. That's Powell getting in for the rebound, and Collins gets called for the foul. That will get us to our media timeout. If you are watching us on ESPNU, please join us over on ESPN after this timeout. And after the timeout, we'll take you to the locker room, hear what Kelly Harper had to say. You're ready for this, okay? You're ready for this? What I want you to think, you're gonna go out and earn it. It's not gonna be given, it's not gonna be easy, and we're okay with that. It's gonna be loud, we're okay with that. Okay, you're ready for this? You've gotta go take it, all right? You do that with effort, winning all the loose balls today, and stay in focus for 40 minutes, okay? You got this. It's a Tennessee team that's played their best basketball at the right time of the season. Steffi Sorensen, we all know what happened in Greenville, SEC semifinal. They had South Carolina on the ropes, just couldn't deliver the knockout punch, but played great in the second half of that game, played great in the opening round against Green Bay, and a good start here in a hostile environment. It's about as dialed in as we've seen Tennessee throughout the year. Rivers with the spin. Woo! Rivers, a terrific defender for Westmore, but that play created by River Baldwin. Rivers in transition, dangerous, but delivers the and one. Look at the spin move, works. Whoop. With a little flex, little continuation. She's got some great speed. She's really transformed herself into a complete player. Honorable mention, AP All-American this season. Fourth in the conference in steals. Comes up with a three-point play. Jules Spear has played in this building before, spent three seasons at Wake Forest, looking for her first shot, gets it for a two, and gets the roll. Jewel outstanding in the postseason, had an average of 18 points a game in the SEC tournament to lead Tennessee in scoring, number two scorer on the season for the Lady Vols, had a little bit better than 13 a game. Too strong. Tess Darby into the game for Tennessee with the rebound. Kaya win on the floor as well for Tennessee in their Summit Blue uniforms. Spear couldn't get it. Hollingshed on the offensive glass, but stepped down the baseline. There'll be NC State basketball. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 
NCAA championships. What a day today. It starts with Notre Dame advancing to the Sweet 16, an ACC-SEC showdown in that game as they took down Ole Miss, an ACC-SEC showdown here today between NC State and Tennessee. Zoe Brooks, the freshman, into the game. Coming off of just an amazing day of basketball yesterday. Mm. Fans on the East Coast stand up real late to watch that West Coast. I mean, that was an absolute all-time classic between Stanford and Iowa State. Jackson now def defended by Hayes, who's staying very close to it. Holly Shea can't hit, and here's Brooks. Great speed, the freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey, with the push. Hayes, good shooter, win a good defender. Win all the way. Oh, splitting defenders. Kind of win. Offense is a bonus for her. And Tennessee's up by four. Yeah, I mentioned transition defense being key, really, for both teams as they like to get up and down and just didn't stop ball. And Kai Wynn took advantage. I think with Kia Jackson, though, you still got to go to her. She's had the hot hand. They're switching off on her. Jackson hesitation. Waits and scores again. Rakia Jackson with 14 first quarter points. More noise being made by the Tennessee fans right now than the NC State fans. Baldwin inside again. That one drops for two. They've had, they had success in their first round game playing through River Baldwin. The guards do a good job of spacing out, letting River Baldwin go to work. She's a great passer out of it. If she comes, if she gets doubled. Jackson on the pull up. A little too strong. And the rebound for Sanaya Rivers. And you know she wants to run. The swing to Hayes. Good shooter, sets for three. with the steal, Spear with the foul. The quickness of Isaiah James on display for NC State. This thing back and forth right now, everybody playing their best basketball. Kaya win. Like, look, nobody really stops ball in transition. That's going to be an easy two for Tennessee and Sanaya Rivers. The court awareness finds her shooter spot up. Oh, a little hesitation. Buries it. Usually that throws off a shooter, but locked in and loaded and has the confidence from her coach to drill that three. 53rd made three of the season, second on the team in that category. She was 0 for 4 on Saturday. There's James, that won't drop. And Ty Wynn has the rebound. Sarah Puckett back into the game for Tennessee. There's Tess Darby. Now keep your hands down on her. She'll launch from three, can't hit this time. And here's Brooks. Inside of a minute to go here in the first quarter. Brooks spins it in for her first two. Seven nothing run for NC State to go in front by one here in the first. First quarter here at NC State, 7 nothing run for the Wolfpack. And a foul was called, so hang on one second here. The officials are slamming the brakes on our break. trouble with Angelica suffering on the microphone so I think 
I'm going to guess they're probably reviewing if there was a foul called before time expired at the end of the quarter. Karen Prieto there with Angelica Suffren, Edward Sedlaski, also the officiating crew here today. Let's play it back while they look at it. Remember, the shot clock was a little ahead of the game clock. I think that's after zeros, yeah. don't you, yeah, that's, Steffi? That's what it looks like to me. Wind hit the iron, so the shot clock isn't the issue there. It would be the game clock, which just a few ticks. And the crowd was so loud, it was hard to hear the whistle, but just going off the visual, it looks like, yep, that's going to be after. So no foul. That's the end of the quarter. So everybody can take a breath, including us. Back with quarter two next. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Try and decide. The storylines are abundant in this matchup between NC State and Tennessee. Westmore and Kelly Harper, Kelly's husband, John, longtime assistant to Kelly. They were assistants to Westmore at Chattanooga. You saw Kelly Harper was a head coach here at NC State. We've just scratched the surface. Steffi's going to get into, she's going to pull the bark back on this coaching family tree and all these connections. We got, we got storyline. We, <laughs> we had to trim some because we had too many. Yeah, that's going to be a foul on Jasmine Powell. Time for today's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods, the Tennessee NC State connections. Now, first of all, Westmore has not one but two degrees from Tennessee. Impressive, impressive. Yes. Kelly and John Harper were assistants at Chattanooga under Wes. He had long success there. Kelly Harper came here, didn't have great success here at NC State. She'd be the first to mention that, so it's a little interesting to have her back here. And then there's the player connections, too. Mimi Collins played her freshman year at Tennessee. That was not for Kelly Harper, though. She did not play for Kelly Harper before coming here to NC State. There's bricks on the pull up for two. And Rakia Jackson, Madison Hayes were teammates at Mississippi State. Another storyline. I think both coaches, it's a little bittersweet of a moment. There's a lot of love for each other. Very respected. And ultimately, though, one, one's going to win. And I know that both coaches, though, have a tremendous amount of respect for each other. Puckett turned it over. Another turnover for Tennessee. Live ball turnover turning into points. Four turnovers for Tennessee, zero for NC State so far. An 11 nothing run for the Wolfpack. Powell is fouled by Brooks. Well, NC State gets it done defensively, shooting out the passing lanes, something that they worked on in practice where they didn't want to necessarily overplay the perimeter but they wanted to make sure they were there right on the catch and terrific defense right now, stifling Tennessee along the perimeter. Struggling to get it inside to the post players. Just want to finish your point on this connection here. They intentionally don't schedule each other. This is uncomfortable. Wes Moore said, I don't like playing Kelly Harper and John Harper. Wes and John go to Vegas every year on vacation. They are friends. This is just an uncomfortable time. Now, they'll scrimmage each other, as you mentioned, because that makes each other better, but there's nothing to gain here. This is a lose-lose because one team wins in their mind, but they have to put that aside here with a spot in the Sweet 16 on the line. Brooks, James, Collins on the turnaround. First points for Mimi Collins. The former Lady Vol knocks it down. And NC State's on top by seven. They got to get Jackson back going after 14 first quarter points. NC State thought they had a steal, but they were on the baseline, so it will stay with Tennessee. Well, I like the decision to post up Hayes with Jackson. He's got some size. Remember, they were former teammates, but terrific help side by NC State to almost force the turnover. 17 on the shot clock. Good defense by NC State. That's tipped out of play, and it will be NC State basketball. 
five turnovers. The only silver lining for that one is it's not a live ball turnover because NC State's been making Tennessee pay for their turns. Composure and poise is ultimately how you stamp your ticket to get to the Sweet 16. They've got to, uh, Tennessee has got to take better care of the basketball. Here's Powell, Powell on the push, Powell to the basket for two. Jasmine Powell, the team leader in assists, also puts in nine points a game. Look at that speed. You cannot sleep on Isaiah James. Holly Shed will try it from 16. That's just great execution for NC State. You get to, to uh, Kia Jackson in the high high pick and roll. Force the, the hard heads. You want Hollingshed shooting that instead of Jackson. And they attack right on the offensive end. Spear gets called for her second personal foul. So Spear goes to the bench with two. There's your top three point shooter for Tennessee. And Sanaya Rivers getting set to go to the free throw line. Sanaya in her sixth NCAA tournament game. She played three with South Carolina in the 2022 tournament, including against UConn in the title game with NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Sweet 16 starts Thursday. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TBS and CBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. What is NC State doing differently defensively to try to neutralize Rakia Jackson, Stephanie? Well, they're, they're, they're making her get the ball out of her hands. And that's that's the great thing. If you're defensively trying to stop her, make other players stop, and there Hollingshed delivers. Someone else steps up. It's Jillian Hollingshed and one. As I've seen throughout this tournament, it might not be the star player. It's going to be role players surrounding them that are going to have to step up and hit big shots to help their team win the game. So Collins picks up her second personal foul. She heads to the bench. One key factor to keep in mind is how she can't convert is depth. NC State doesn't have a ton of it. In the ACC championship game against Notre Dame, Brooks with the ball right now was the only sub that Westmore used. So foul trouble could be critical for NC State. Brooks defended by Darby. Powell on top of uh, James. James, no. Hollingshed giving good minutes in the post for Tennessee. Here's Jackson. Wanted to return it to Hollingshed, but instead, Rakia will do it herself after 14 in the first quarter. First points of the second quarter for the All American. Not sure what Madison Hayes can do differently other than being right in Jackson face. That's going to be an illegal screen on Madison Hayes. That's her first personal. Take another look at this Jackson bucket. Hayes on the catch in her face. Jackson is just that good and delivers. Now we're starting to feel a little bit momentum shifting in Tennessee's favor. It's a game of runs. NC State went on their run. So interesting here, Hayes comes out with the personal foul, and Westmore does go to freshman Maddie Cox. She did play 13 minutes against Chattanooga, but did not play in the ACC championship game against Notre Dame. Big test here for the freshman, and Jackson puts her to work. Can't hit the turnaround. Rivers against Hollingshed for two. <laughs> River's bounce is special. I mean, it is truly special when she gets around the rim. Powell looking for offense. Can't find it. There's James. James with a handle. James with a push. James with a finish.
<laughs> well, Dre, sp speak it to your team, girl. I mean, shot selection is so key against this NC State team. They've got 17 points in transition, and we're, what is this, 10 and a half minutes in this game. They have got to be careful in the half court of taking early shots. It's leading to quick runouts for the Wolfpack. There's Powell five on the shot clock. Powell's got to go. Dropped it down, try to make the extra pass. Another turnover for Tennessee. That is six turnovers for the Lady Vols. NC State has turned it over just once. Gets us to our media timeout with 4.57 to go in the second quarter in an eight-point game. Time for Get More, brought to you by Geico. Women's and men's teams both in the Sweet 16. Duke, men and women both in after the women won yesterday. UConn can get two in. The men are already in. Gonzaga can get two in. Creighton can get two in. We got a <laughs> problem here because NC State or Tennessee, Tennessee men are in, the NC State men are in, and their head coach is in the building. Familiar face around here, Kevin Keats. Supporter of the women's program, his team continues to run roll after losing four in a row. They've won seven in a row, including the winner overtime over Oakland Saturday night in Pittsburgh. Unbelievable to watch this roll for his squad and and, and watching Wes Morris lay uh, his face light up when we asked him about it. Those two were close. He took a jet up there to see. NC State in the ACC tournament to cheer him on, rode back with the team, or flew back with the team. And the, the two, two coaches that really support these programs. So Wes Moore trying to join his friend Kevin Keats in the Sweet 16. Men will play Marquette in Dallas on Friday night. Second turnover NC, NC State, and here is Powell on the push. And look at the defense. Sanaya Rivers, all defensive team in the ACC, starts it on one end. James couldn't finish it on the other end. Caroline Stripling with the rebound. Jackson defended by Cox. This will be big here for NC State if they can get some minutes and some good defense out of Cox. Darby with a deep three. That's off the, the mark. second deep three. I think that you can work it around and, and let Darby get that three late in the shot clock, not with seven or eight seconds off the shot clock. Rivers a little too strong. Stripling fighting for the rebound. The freshman is there to take it away from three Tennessee players. Brooks on the pillow. NC State making the most of those second chance opportunities. About the bench play. Brooks and Cox stepping up. Double digit lead for the first time tonight for the Wolfpack. Puckett with the turnaround for two. Five points for Sarah Puckett. Sarah Puckett. I mean, you can you can see the deliberate push in transition in this game. Only seven in that first round matchup against Chattanooga and 17 shooting 57 percent. These some of those have been on makes. They're getting out quickly. And James Brooks and Rivers have been dynamite in the paint. James gets go. the roll. 12 for James on six of 11 shooting, averaging 16 points a game on the season. Jackson's been held in check here in the second quarter. More good work by Cox. Cox runs into the screen from Strickland. Here comes NC State in transition one more time. Brooks launching the three. Oh, Wolfpack right now. It can't quiet the crowd. Here comes NC State on the push again. 
Tennessee will get organized on defense. Kelly Harper told us number one key for them transition defense getting back and it is hurting the Lady Vols right now big time. I think they've got to send more defenders back. Darby gets whistled for the foul. I mean, NC State in that first round game shot 27% from the three point line. And Kelly Harper was telling us statistically, maybe they're not a great three point shooting team, but they're streaky. And when they get hot, everybody can get hot. And you see James, Zoe Brooks, Rivers, everybody feeling it right now. Isaiah, Isaiah knew <laughs> even before court. even before Brooks had set her feet, she knew. Cox now looking for some offense, and she gets knocked down by Darby. A couple of quick fouls on Tess Darby. She has two. Fourth team foul on the Lady Balls with 122 to go in the quarter. Jules Spear picking up the two fouls hurt Tennessee. They struggle this season when it's just Rakia Jackson and, and everybody kind of standing around or one pass and a quick shot. And Jackson's got 16, but no one else really doing damage. So they're going to have to work the ball around and maybe go back through Rakia Jackson offensively. Drop back to Rivers. Rivers off balance for two more. 12 for Rivers on four of seven shooting. As a team, the Wolfpack are 19 of 31 from the field. That's 61%. Strickland for three, no. Final minute of the second quarter. It's been all Wolfpack. Brooks can't get it. And here's Kaya Wynn. Jackson. 14 points in the first quarter, just two here in the second quarter. And it's NC State ball, and they'll hold for a final shot. Isaiah James. Finds Sanaya Rivers, who knocks down the shot. I mean, the guards have been so connected. I can't say that enough. And they'll have an opportunity for the last shot here. Crowd trying to push the wolf back across the finish line. Seven for Brooks. Brooks through traffic. The kick, Cox. You knew that was going down. You just knew it. Her fifth three of the season. Big minutes off the bench. A big lead at halftime. Zoe Brooks, the freshman. Spot up. I'll find you. Zoe Brooks, five dimes. First round, Rakia Jackson. She's been a dynamite. What a game so far. Halftime off to the Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One back here at Reynolds Coliseum. Sellout crowd. They were entertained, those in the red, of course, by what they saw in that second quarter when NC State outscored Tennessee 25-8 in quarter two to take a big lead. The first quarter, though, belonged to Rakia Jackson for Tennessee, Steffi. Yeah, Rakia Jackson leading all scores for Tennessee, 16 points, 7 of 13. She set the tone. But on the flip side, NC State roaring back, especially on that second quarter. Zaya James was terrific. She's so bouncy, explosive, terrific mid-range player. Had, her, had whatever shot she wanted, it was falling. The biggest difference, in my opinion, she had help. It was Sanaya Rivers. It was Zoe Brooks. They were cashing in as well. So take a look at Xfinity's most reliable team, NC State. It's been their balance. Six different players this season have led NC State in scoring. And on par today, the balance has led, has led them to this lead. Seven played, seven scored for NC State, and it'll be NC State basketball here to start the third quarter. Here's Rivers with the first possession for NC State. They closed the first quarter on a 7-0 run, started the second quarter on a 6-0 run, closed the second quarter on a 10-0 run. Trying to keep that going here in the third. 
That's off the mark, but Collins got inside for the rebound. Too easy for Mimi Collins. One of the big reasons why Tennessee was really successful in their first round matchup against Green Bay is they were really active defensively. They, they were locked in. They were getting stops, getting defensive rebounds. They had a lot of deflections. That's something I've been tracking. 17 in that game against Green Bay, just two today against NC State. They got to be more aggressive defensively. That's an adjustment they can make. Jackson makes an adjustment inside to score. She now has 18. See Tamari Key back on the floor. She picked up two early fouls in the first half. Hayes launches. No. Spear, who has two fouls with the rebound. Got to get Spear going. She can heat up in a hurry, not this time. What do you think about the shot selection for Tennessee here overall today? It's just been too quick, and they, they've got to work the ball around. Let go. Tamari Key's in the game. Give it to Tamari Key. Let her establish herself against River Ball. When good things will happen, she'll, she'll pass it out. I thought Tennessee was a little bit too... Too quick to shoot within the shot clock and kind of settled for some big uh, outside jumpers. Foul's going to be called on Isaiah James. That's her first. James scored 12 in the first half. Rivers had 12. Brooks with 11. Three and double figures. As you saw, seven scoring for NC State. Powell. Comes up with a three-point shot. Normally not her thing at 26% on the season. That is her 22nd made three, but Tennessee will look for inspiration and a spark wherever they can find it right now. Baldwin trying to work on Tamari Key. So Key holds her ground, and here come the Lady Balls with Spear on the push. And that's going to be foul number three on Jewel Spear. James, I think her shoe fell off as well. Torso dead center to Jewel Spear. Easy call for the official. Great, def de great defensive play by James. Man, doing it on both ends. Been so impressed with NC State as a whole, the balance that they play with. You would think, too, this is an easy call for Kelly Harper as Rivers to the basket again, leaving Spear on the floor with the three fouls. Your season's on the line right now. It's a big deficit. you got to hang tough right now, you would think, and you need Jewel Spear and your primary players out there. Here's Puckett blocked by Baldwin, kept it in play. Again, NC State in transition. Collins, too strong, key with the rebound. Puckett, quick launch for three. And there is Jewel Spear on the offensive glass for two. I'd be the easiest look Spear gets today. You mentioned her playing at Wake Forest, so Wolfpack very familiar with what Spear wants to do, trying to force her to put the ball on the floor. Three-year starter for the Deeks in her first year with Tennessee this year. Collins turned her back, and Sanaya Rivers in the right place at the right time to make sure it's not it's a, a turnover. collective gasp <laughs> in the arena. I was going to say, it's their day, day when they pass like that is destined for out of bounds and they don't turn over and then they did turn it over right after that for just their third two turnovers in the first half for Westmore's team had just nine in round one against Chattanooga Powell and Key go to work Back out top, Darby with five in the shot clock. Fed inside, but Rivers saw it coming. Turnover number eight for Tennessee. Collins off the mark. Powell rejected by Rivers, who snags it out of the air. James steps back, launches a three. But she had it frustrated near midcourt, and Tennessee will walk it up. Once again, it's Hayes defending Rakia Jackson.
Tennessee really working this clock down this time down the floor. It's down to five, and Puckett's got to turn and fire a three. Tennessee team averaging better than 76 points a game this season. Shot 58% against Green Bay, but the offense out of sync here at NC State against a very good defensive team. Tamari Key with the block, and Puckett keeps it in play. Powell trying to get it into Key, and she was displaced by River Baldwin, who picks up her second personal foul. Tonight, Rivers, you want defense? I know someone who can play it. That's Rivers, 22 and white. Great help side D, and then great on-ball defense. The big reason why she's all AC defensive team. Let's see how they are fueling the run, brought to you by Wendy's. NC State has been a, at a blistering pace in transition. 20 points in fast breaks. Sanaya Rivers with the flex on steals, on makes. No matter what, the guards are getting it and they're going. Zoe Brooks, the freshman, has stepped up for Westmore, delivered with the easy two. So impressed with how, no matter what, the pace with which NC State has played with, has easy buckets. 20. Terrific outing so far. So 20 fast break points, paint points, 28-10 is the advantage for NC State over Tennessee. We know with Tennessee's size, they've always had success in the paint, but NC State tried to deny Tennessee in that category. Spear can hit. Kaya went into the game, tipped it, but couldn't take it away from Rivers. And here is Zoe Brooks back on the floor, and you know she wants to push tempo. We also have to mention that NC State out-rebounding Tennessee, and, and NC State is a good... Great rebounding team, but Wes Moore brought it up to his team during practice. Kelly Harper played for Pat Summit. He mentioned rebounding, he mentioned defense. That's how they play. I thought that was a great message that he had to his team, kind of honoring Kelly Harper and, and their relationship, their friendship. Well, he went right for the Pat Summit quote. Offense sells tickets, defense wins games, rebounding wins championships. He told his team that. He said their head coach played for Pat Summit. You know their team's going to play that way. We have to be better than them on the glass. Tamari Key inside for her second field goal. Tennessee has outscored NC State 9-4 here in this third quarter as they try to chip away. That was an 18-point halftime deficit. Rivers open the way for three. <laughs> NC State now four of eight from outside the three-point line. Kaya win. To see Hayes flapping her arms, doing whatever she can to take Rakia Jackson out of the lineup and out of the rhythm of the offense. Another turnover, another push by James. Tipped out by Zoe Brooks, and it will be Tennessee basketball. I, th I thought she had the right-handed layup. I know she was looking left. But NC State, again, something that they were you know, really harping on was moving without the basketball, moving along the perimeter. Westmore felt like his team had been a little bit too stagnant the last few weeks. I have not seen that at all today. It has been ball movement. They have been active on defense, suffocating Tennessee defensively, not letting them do what they want, just to move easily within a set. Except for that, you go to Rikia Jackson. Jackson has 20. She was 6 of 9 from the field in the first quarter. Now 3 of 6 since. She hasn't been able to get looks, get the basketball, but she's at the 20-point mark for the 13th time this season and the 48th time of her career. Hayes looking around if a screen is coming. Jackson hangs in the air, but can't get it to drop. But she'll go to the free throw line to shoot two.
Well, you're seeing what's coming in the Women's Championship for the fourth straight year. Every NCAA Women's Championship game on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. And what a day today. Already Notre Dame with a victory over Ole Miss. Hannah Hidalgo, 19 points, 4 assists, 4 steals. Sending Notre Dame to the Sweet 16. After us, Syracuse, DeAsia Fair, who went for 32 against Arizona. 13 of those 32 came in the final 2 minutes and 42 seconds. In short, she can line it up in a hurry. She'll be taking on UConn in stores. She is, is must-see television. Rolled her team to that win. I'm looking forward to the battle against... Obviously, Paige Beckers and Aaliyah Edwards. They had great first round games. Well, good hands by Tamari Key to knock it away. Tennessee trying to build a little momentum here. They've got it down to a 12 point game with the basketball inside of two minutes to go in the third. Yeah, their defense is a little bit better. That, that's, that's how they can get back in this game is they've got to be more aggressive defensively. They got two consecutive stops. Powell will head to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Uh, we're looking forward to the matchup. DeAsia Fair, Paige Beckers, of course, who went for 28, 11, and 7 on Saturday. Aaliyah Edwards had 20 for UConn. Someone by the name of Caitlin Clark is playing tonight for Iowa. I'm familiar with her work just a little bit. Are you, Steffi? <laughs> Very familiar. Um, a lot of eyeballs on that game. And then obviously, Juju Watkins. I love the mixture of newcomers on the scene and then also players that have been around and that we will watch in the summer in the WNBA and Caitlin Clark, projected number one overall draft pick. Powell at the free throw line makes the first. Yeah, great point, Juju, outstanding freshman, of course. Mackenzie Forbes, one of those veteran players who played for Harvard, coming in and injecting some great leadership on that team. So that's coming up later on tonight. This game is a game again. It's now a 10-point game as Tennessee tries to keep things going on the defensive end. Shot clock at nine. Rivers defended by Spear. Back out to Brooks. Brooks on the run. No. And Brooks gets called for the foul. Another stop for Tennessee. I thought I think if the Lady Vols can get two more stops, get themselves to the free throw line, stop the clock, chip, chip away at the lead, build some confidence heading into the fourth. But we definitely got a game back with, with it just being a 10-point deficit. So that's the second foul on Zoe Brooks. And Jasmine Powell will head to the free throw line, shoot a couple more. Remember in that semifinal game against South Carolina, Tennessee fell behind by 23 in the first half against the number one team in the country. They outscored South Carolina by 22 in the second half. Came up just short, as we all know, but they were a different team in the second half. This showing some signs of that that we saw in Greenville a couple of weeks ago. 8 nothing run right now for the Lady Vols. There's Brooks, seven on the shot clock. James gets half a step on Powell. Then it in the river, Baldwin. And a foul on the push by Powell before the shot, although the official's going to have a conversation here. Remember the first half, NC State had a bit of a continuation. You know that's what Tennessee's calling for right now. They want to say that was in the act of shooting. So Karen Prieto and Jellica Suffern having a conversation. I think that's what they're probably talking about, Steffi, no? Yeah, no, I, I think you hit, you hit it exactly right. Officials trying to make the, the right call here. No shot, two free throws is what Karen Prieto says. Yeah, I, that's the right call. Yeah. I think there was hard lobbying from those wearing <laughs> Summit Blue and the orange, and I think they knew deep down that was going to be a stretch. Kelly Harper didn't protest too much, so Powell delivers again at the free throw line. So Spear will check out.
Kai went on the floor for the final seconds of the third quarter. Brooks goes to work with eight. Brooks will launch a three. Nope. And the rebound for Kaya Wynn. And Wynn will launch it at the buzzer. And that is it. But a good third quarter for Tennessee. They outscored NC State 19-9. But it's an eight-point lead for the Wolfpack as we head to the fourth with a spot in the Sweet 16 on the line. Bracket continues to be filled in for Regional 4 in Portland. The winner of this game will take on Stanford Friday at the Moda Center. Stanford with that thriller against Iowa State last night, winning it in overtime, 87-81. Time for today's Star Stories brought to you by Honda. A star is born in Kiki Iriopin with their 41 points in leading Stanford for victory. Um, there were no words. I mean, that performance, you know, Cameron Green fouling out. And it's all eyes on Kiki Iriopin, and she absolutely delivered time after time. Clutch bucket, getting to the free throw line, and, and nailing the free throws. It's one for the ages. Fourth quarter underway here at Reynolds Coliseum, NC State University. Rakia Jackson wide open for three. No rebound for Madison Hayes. Spear playing with three fouls, pulled the arms back to avoid a fourth. NC State shot 23% from the field in that third quarter. And they are cold here in the second half. That's opened the door here for Tennessee. Gary Key at 6-7 has given them really solid minutes, not only just here as in the post, but being able to close out high on some of the guards and working off that on ball. Just being a little bit more disruptive. I really like her staying in the game. With River Baldwin, the big for NC State on the bench. Tennessee goes right at the Collins key matchup. James hesitation, counted, and the foul. What a finish by Isaiah James. Chance for a three-point play. Toughness on full display by Ten and White. James with the and one time after she is not shy about getting to the rim that is where she wants to go we have had her eyes on we've had our eyes on her since the tip and she has been terrific today at 19 against chattanooga all in the second half she's got 15 tonight and it's back to a nine point lead for nc states Jackson has Brooks on the switch. Collins open for three. Powell tipped it into the hands of Tess Darby. Jackson quickly into the front court. Woo! Couldn't get it the first time. She'll have a chance at the free throw line. That's three on Collins, so Hayes with three, Collins with three. Hayes has had the primary responsibility of trying to defend Rakia Jackson. That bears watching. Spear, the only one for Tennessee with more than two. And here is Rakia Jackson. She will be Tennessee's 46th first round WNBA draft pick. It'll be the fourth straight year with a first round pick for UT. Jordan Horston was a first round pick a season ago. She will be a high first-round pick, Rakita Jackson. 26 for Jackson for the second consecutive game. James rejected by Key. Powell to the basket, left-hand finish, no. Now NC State trying to get back out on the run. Worked so well for them in the second quarter. James open three. Off the mark, Tess Darby with the rebound.
NC State shooting under 23% from the field this half. Jackson defended by Rivers. Into Key. Key wants to work again on Collins. Can't get it to drop. Here come the Wolfpack. Brooks aggressive for two. Do we have some special freshmen in this country or what? First points of the second half for Brooks. She's got 13 for the game. Spear trying to get around James. Spear to the basket. Can't finish it. Numbers for NC State. Brooks for two. That inside Jackson. Can't believe that didn't drop. She'll shoot two. I don't know how Powell found her. That was threading the needle by Jasmine Powell. That goes back to their AAU teammate days. Zoe Brooks, the freshman. And then again in transition, we have seen this the entirety of the game. For some reason, Tennessee has just struggled to identify somebody and guard them and stop the ball. And T NC State has taken full advantage. See Mimi Collins going to the bench, Steffi. That's her fourth personal foul. So she'll sit down with 6.34 to go. Jackson, good free throw shooter at 78%. This is a very good free throw shooting team at almost 75%. The third highest free throw percentage in program history for Tennessee. So Jackson will get a little rest here. Six and a half to go in the quarter. Maybe her last little chance to sit down as we get closer to the five minute media timeout. She's earned a rest, 27 points on 10 of 18 shooting. Brooks. Baldwin back into the game. Puckett couldn't control the rebound, NC State basketball. with a shot clock at four. Baldwin against Key. Too strong. Tamari Key's been a difference maker. Had the foul trouble in the first half, but she has made a big difference here in the second half. Puckett with the left. No. Spear tried to save it. Could not. Threw it to NC State, and here comes Brooks. Hayes transition three. And that's going to be a foul on Isaiah James over the back of Tess Darby. That's three on James. And that's enough of a rest for Rakia Jackson. She's coming back into the game for Tennessee. Yeah, I don't know how much of a breather Jackson is going to get with 5.45 to go. This could be her last game in a Lady Vols, jer Lady Vols jersey. And the foul starting to accumulate. We mentioned NC State. Westmore really only playing six deep. We saw him play Maddie Cox, the freshman, going seven. But Mimi Collins has been good against Rakia Jackson. Madison Hayes, they've been kind of having the duties, but right now Hayes guarding Rakia Jackson. They're looking for Key in the post. It's Puckett. Back out to Darby. Jackson. Tough shot. Rakia Jackson. Two more. 29 for Rakia. It's called for the foul. I'll be just the second team foul on Tennessee. Two people very familiar with each other, former teammates at Mississippi State, Madison Hayes, Rakia Jackson. Listen, this is isolation 101. That's a future pro. We give it to her and let her work. And she can deliver 29 on the afternoon. Hayes and Jackson played together the 2020 the 2021 season. Seems like forever ago. <laughs> <laughs> 
Seems like Rakia Jackson has been playing at an elite level since the first shot she took at Mississippi State, and she keeps it going. 31 for Jackson. That matches her season high that she posted against Florida State in November. Four-point game. Brooks will try to pull up. Too strong, and Tess Darby's got the rebound. Tennessee has outscored NC State 30 to 16 since halftime. Key does it herself. Her mom, Tammy, loves it. That's Rakia's mom, Karen, next to her. She loves it. Kelly Harper loves it the most. Tries to get downhill, has it knocked away, but Jackson gets called for the foul on the drive. It was before any move to the basket. Tamara Key playing in her hometown state. Give it to the big girl, 6-7 delivers. Mom in the house, she traveled to get here, oh yeah. <laughs> The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome back to the 16th meeting all time between NC State and Tennessee, their first meeting since 2004. It was a Tennessee win in the Jimmy V Women's Classic and the head coaches in that game, Pat Summit and Kay Yao. Take a look at the game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. What stands out, Steffi Sorensen? Probably that last graphic there. Tennessee trailing, trailed by 20 points in the third quarter. And now here we are with three minutes and 44 seconds left to go. Rakia Jackson has put this team on her back, 32 points. Tamari Key has been absolutely a monster in the paint. She's deflected shots, she's blocked shots. She's been a pre post presence for them. River ball went back into the game. That's a matchup we'll watch. Out of the five-minute media timeout, knocked out of bounds. It'll be NC State doing it again with Brooks triggering the inbound. Collins on the bench with four fouls for the Wolfpack. They go to Baldwin. Baldwin dropped it off to Brooks. James over key. <laughs> Jules Spear time. We've seen Rakia, but Spear has got to deliver for them. Baldwin rejects Jackson and keeps it in play. Three minutes to go. A spot in the Sweet 16 on the line. Four point game. Rivers back to James. James for three. <laughs> Key backs in, puts it in for two to quiet the crowd. Tamari Key in the double figures with 10, eight in the second half. Rivers. Back out James. Ooh, Powell knocked it away. It was last touch by Tennessee. 14 to shoot for the Wolfpack. That's more smart decision to go right back to that play that got this three for Isaiah James. Great screen for Baldwin, Powell, no closeout. Westmore is going to take a timeout with 2.07 to go here in the fourth. We'll take it as well, five-point game.
Well, Westmore calls a timeout, drawing up a play in the NC State huddle with 14 on the shot clock, 2.07 on the game clock. And we are just getting started on what Let's is go. a spectacular day. I love the t-shirt celebrating Gino's 70th birthday. Paige Beckers will be on the floor. Caitlin Clark will be on her home floor for one final time. You talk about electric atmosphere. Yeah. That's what you'll see in Iowa. And you will see Juju Watkins, who made history, passing the great Cheryl Miller scoring record. USC taking on Kansas. 10 o'clock tonight all here on ESPN. Uh, the timeout into the hands of Rivers. Gets around Powell. Rivers, too strong. Jackson with the rebound. Inside of two minutes to play here in the fourth. Knocked out of Darby's hands. Powell's got it. Powell to the basket. Denied by Rivers, NC State ball. I think they're gonna go to the monitor. Really Harper motioning to, to take a look at this. So they will send the teams to their benches and they'll go to check it out on replay just to confirm possession. The out of bounds, which was awarded to North Carolina State, is under review. Angelica Suffer with the clear explanation, so you know what they're looking at. Let's take a look while they get their replay going. It's Tamari Key reaching in to knock it out of play. This will probably be our best look. Here's Key. I don't think it hits Baldwin after Key's motion to knock it forward. I don't think there's anything that would overturn this. I think Key's six foot ten and a half, excuse me, six foot eleven and a half wingspan. Put that ball right there. Calls confirmed. After review. The ball remains NC State. So NC State basketball, 137 to go, five-point game. What does Tennessee try to do defensively here with NC State putting it into play on the baseline? Looks like they're going to go a little bit of full-court pressure here, take some time off of the shot clock for NC State, make them uncomfortable. you got to know personnel. You've got, you got to stay in front of, your, uh, of the offensive player. Rivers kicks it over. James. James. Baldwin and the foul. Zaya James. Let's check out her seventh dime on the day. Woo! Crafty finds River Baldwin. When you need her, she'll deliver. It has been teamwork this season. That is a great depiction of what's gotten this Wolfpack team so far. Baldwin finishes the three-point play. She's got 11 to go along with seven rebounds. James with 20 points, three rebounds, and seven assists. into the front court, key to the bench. Tips, turnover, NC State ball. Brooks in no hurry. Back to Rivers. Tennessee trying to foul. Now it's tough to catch the eye Rivers. Madison Hayes, look for the knockout punch, couldn't hit it. Here comes Rakia Jackson, under a minute to play. Powell to the basket and she'll go to the free throw line. Took a hard fall. Westmore just just not happy with Hayes' decision making there. Instead of taking that three, why not take some more time off the shot clock? A teaching moment there for Madison Hayes as Tennessee gets itself to the free throw line. And Madison the senior, like with a nod, I know, I got you. <laughs> Heard. Tough love. 
So the foul on Zoe Brooks, her third. to get the roll and a timeout is called by NC State in what is now a six point game with 53.8 to go. Let's check in with L in the studio. I mean an absolute nail biter right now. A reminder that we've got fantastic games ahead including 13 minutes from now number three UConn facing number six Syracuse Paige Becker's absolutely shined in her first tournament game. Since April of 2022, 28 points, 11 boards, 7 assists, 3 steals, 1 blocks. I could keep going, but we want to settle in for the rest of this one. We'll see you in a minute. Ellie, you always have a lot to say, and there's a lot to say today with so many great games. We still have a few things to say here with under a minute to go. This game is not over yet. It is a two-possession game. Plenty of timeouts for Tennessee if they want to advance the basketball so they can keep in this game for a while but they need to get stops here absolutely it's going to be stops to be aggressive but any any sort of foul obviously no fouls to give for either team protect the paint know where Zaya James is there's win now they swarm rivers and Jackson gives it a bump and rivers will head to the free throw line to shoot two Sanaya Rivers is unquestionably the leader of this team, and that leadership shines after NC State lost back-to-back -back games in conference play to Duke in North Carolina. She called a team meeting, and she told the players to write on index cards what was on their mind, what wasn't working with the team, and she said some had a lot to write. Some had to air some grievances, but the main takeaway was we're not taking this serious enough. So Sanaya holds on to the card. She's the only one who's read the cards, that, trying to figure out whose handwriting it is. Only Sanaya knows, and if she thinks, sees things aren't happening the right way in practice or in a game, she'll pull those cards out. She carries them in her bag all the time. So those cards are always there for her, and it's a reminder of what's happening with the team, what needs to be right, and it's been right since that moment. They've gone four and one, only losing to Notre Dame in the ACC championship game. I am just blown away by the, the leadership, the growth of Sanaya Rivers and her teammate, Isaiah James, crediting her with that player-led meeting. Unbeknownst to, to their head coach, what was all going down, but the players came together so that there was a moment that if someone needed to be held accountable, if there was something written down, it was Sanaya Rivers who could go to that player, make sure that they were okay. It was being more serious how far do we want to go how, how how good can we be and they're about 49 seconds away from the sweet 16. Sanaya who of course started her career as we mentioned at South Carolina Dawn Staley said your future is at a point guard as a point guard little did we know it would be a point guard at NC State and she has stepped into that role first team all conference the junior from Wilmington with 18 points trying to push NC State to the Sweet 16. Seven point game, 49.4 out of the Tennessee timeout. Here's Jewel Spear, unlimited range, an open look and banks it in for three. Here's the pressure and the timeout's called by Wes Moore. Kelly Harper is livid about that timeout. She thought that they had the steal and the score, but the timeout was called at midcourt. Pleading uh, her case, but. 30 second timeout, NC State. Kelly's looks on the sideline, the emotion. And now her assistant's just grabbing her, saying, just let's get in the huddle, let's reset. We all remember the look on Kelly Harper after Camilla Cardozo's game-winning shot for South Carolina. And then Tennessee turns up the defense, but Westmore was calling a timeout. 
Look at the top of your screen. Timeout, timeout. The ball was in play, but you saw the officials arm up, so... Kelly uh, Harper knows they were a split second away from a steal and a score. And, and Jewel Spear got free because of Zion James was was off the inbounder, doubling up on Rakia Jackson. So Spear free for that three. What will they do here? Will they quickly foul? They will. James is fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. 77 percent on the season, one for one now today. Powell picks up her third. Well, Harper's team extending this game right now. They get the spear three-pointer. Forcing NC State to make the free throws. <laughs> 21 now for Zaya James. 31 for Rakia Jackson. Clutch free throws for James. Timeout called by Tennessee. That will leave one for the Lady Balls. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. She just delivered at the free throw line. She has set the tone throughout here today for NC State. Her, her, her unselfish play, getting teammates involved, but when she needed to score it, she was able to, man, with ease, the three-point line, the mid-range, getting to the around, finding open gaps, being able to attack 22, seven assists, most impressively against Tennessee's length, zero turnovers. What a day for James. It's a big story for NC State. Just four turnovers all game for the Wolfpack, helping them to a six-point lead, 44 seconds away from a trip to Portland. Flip it around. Six-point game, two possessions. We've been here before for Tennessee. Yep. They got the three from Spear. Is that where they look, or do they look for Jackson? Do you need a three right now? I'm, I'm a fan of first available shot. Don't take a lot of time off the shot clock. There's, you could run some two-man game with, with Jackson and with Jules Spear. Whether you pick and pop, you got, you got to go quickly. Obviously, with a six-point deficit for Tennessee, no more than 10 to 12 seconds. Spear would obviously be, she just hit a three, so I think she deserves a look, but Rakia Jackson has been absolutely dynamite today. But you can't go wrong with the two of them in an action. Everyone rising to their feet here inside Reynolds Coliseum. Final minute, the winner to take on the two seat Stanford in Portland on Friday. Spear throws it into Jackson. They look for the quick shot. They get it from Rakia. 33 now for Rakia Jackson. Here's the pressure. Mimi Collins back in the game. Oh, a tie up. Possession arrows with NC State. Remember, they still have the arrow, but they are making it difficult right now for the Wolfpack. The second possession with Tennessee with full throttle defense, trying to force a turnover. Almost had that steal, but more West more burned that timeout. Hayes back to James. James swapped in the backcourt. Rivers pushes it across in time, and she is fouled by Rakia Jackson before the shot. Two free throws for Sanaya. That's the third on Jackson. And Rivers heading to the free throw line. Five of seven today, 74% on the season. Tennessee will not take a timeout to advance it. They'll keep that in their pocket. Powell on the push. Tipped 
Out of bounds by Zoe Brooks. Tennessee ball. We're looking to the bench, seeing if they want to go to the replay. And Zoe Brooks is like, don't even ask for a review. I touched it last. Let's play. Darby, good three point shooter, trying to get her shot. Rivers denies it. Foul, Tennessee. Sonia Rivers, time and again. Her star gets brighter and brighter by the minute. How about this play? A sweet 16 on the line. Hands up, stays with Darby, knows what she wants to do. The discipline, no foul. Just a great closeout. Rivers, wow, what a play. All might but seal it up for NC State. 19 points, six rebounds, two assists, two steals, and three block shots for Rivers. You can't wish that one in. There's Powell into the front court. Powell with the crossover, and a foul is going to be called on Zoe Brooks. Could have gone against Tennessee because Tess Darby was in harm's way right there for the Lady Balls, but that is a foul on NC State and two free throws coming for Tennessee. Four fouls on Brooks. And Tennessee with a chance to score with the clock stops. Powell, 8 of 11 from the line today. Kyle Wynn gets in there. Second chance here for Tennessee. Find your shooters. Puck gets a shooter. Can't get it. Zoe Brooks with the rebound. And Zoe Brooks is fouled near midcourt. Eight point eight to go in a six point game. Time and score not in Tennessee's favor right now. And Zoe Brooks can put it away at the line. Performance by the freshman playing big minutes here in the NCAA tournament. One of two from the free throw line. Powell into the front court. Spear launches for three. This one won't drop. Grabbed by NC State. It's a sweet, sweet 16. For the 16th time, NC State is headed to the sweet 16. They're heading to Portland. Dear friends, Westmore, Kelly Harper, John Harper. Seventy-nine, seventy-two, the final. NC State heading back to the Sweet 16. They have a date with Stanford on Friday. Gonna be a good one. The way that the.